Hello from Florida. So today I want to do a little bit of a different video for you today and this time it's a product uh, that I want to share with you. And this is something that I've been building in house. I've been testing it and I've installed it for my last couple customers and my rig included. And you might have seen it in the last couple solar install videos uh, that I've posted. And that product is this box right here. And this is a generator start stop box. So in this video, I want to share with you what it is, what it does, how to configure it and how it can benefit you. So stay tuned. All right. So let's talk a little bit about what this box does. This handy little box does. In short, what it does is it interfaces between the servo gx and the onan generator so when your servo is configured for generator start stop it will send a signal to start your generator however to get that to work you have to have something to send that signal to your generator and that is what this box does so now i'm going to go into my rv and just show you uh, where i have it installed what wires are connected to it and how to connect it to your system all right, so this is the generator start stop box located in my RV. It's in my front storage compartment located above the generator. And so I'm using this box because it has a cover over the setting so you can't accidentally make changes to it. And I've developed this to make it as easy and as safe to use as possible. So let's go into the different options it has and what it does. So looking on the unit first, there is a breaker switch. Basically, it's an on off switch for this breaker, for this uh, gen start stop box. So if you put your RV in storage and you don't wanna drain your battery, you can turn this off and it cuts the power to all of the relays. Otherwise you turn it on and you got green light and it's ready to go. All right, so next to the breaker, the on off switch, there are four programmable relays. And let me talk a little bit about why or what they do and why I used four of them. So the very first relay is a stop slash prime relay. And what that does is when the servo sends a signal to start, it will first prime your generator or it will stop an already running generator before it tries to start it. So that's the purpose of relay number one. Relay number two is just a wait timer. So when relay three wants to start it has to wait till this has finished basically to give a pause between this relay and when this one fires up so as already mentioned relay three is actually starting the generator and then relay four is what will stop the generator at the end so these relays they're programmable and basically the only setting you would need to change on these is the timing of it. So like how long does this relay fire to prime the generator? How long does this one uh, send the start signal for? So for example, if you have a diesel generator, you might need to increase the prime to prime a diesel generator longer than you do a gas generator. So that's the reason why I went programmable. So you can adjust it depending on your environment, your generator, your setup. All right, let me give you a quick demonstration on how this auto start stop box works. So I'm gonna be using it from VRM on my phone, but you can also be doing it from the touch screen on the inside. So VRM, you click on your installation, then the top you click the little button here, and then you can see uh, it has the generator controls here. I have auto start enabled already, but I can do a manual control. So if I click on start, it will count down five, four, three, two, one that the generator will start. And you can see here's the prime signal. It's priming it. And now we're gonna give it a, a second to wait. And now we're gonna try to start it. So the generator is now running. And when you're ready to ready to stop it manually, you click the red button. It will count down again from five, four, three, two, one, and then you'll see it send a stop signal here. And that is how the generator stop stop generator start stop box works. 
So when you get this box from me, it comes pre-wired inside with all the wires connecting all the relays. And then there are seven wires, seven pigtails that you need to connect to your system. So let's talk a little bit about what those wires are. All right, so when you get this box from me, it's gonna come pre-wired and there are seven wires that you need to connect to your RV in order to get this to work. So let's talk about what those wires are. So on this side, you can see there's three wires that are coming out and that are connecting to your Servo GX. So you got your normally open wire, your common wire, and your normally closed wire. So there's are three labels that connect to the relay. And inside the box, they are color coded and they are labeled with which wire needs to go to which uh, port on the relay. On the other side, you can't really see, but there's four wires that are coming in. And that would be your positive wire and your negative wire and then your generator start wire and your generator stop wire. So you have three on this side that go to your servo and then three that go to your RV. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about that gen start stop box and how to install in your RV and how to connect those wires to your system, let me show you on the computer now how to configure it so you can get that functionality to work with your servo GX. All right, so let's hop on the computer here and let me show you how to configure the Servo GX with a generator start stop function that interfaces with that box. All right, so here you are. You can see that I am logged into the VRM portal. Now you can do this on the touch screen as well, um, but I'm doing this through the VRM portal. So you can see this is the dashboard for my system. You can see we got shore power coming in, our AC loads. So this is just the overview of my Victron system. So what we want to do is we want to go to the remote console. And again, this is what you would see on a touch screen if you had that configured, uh, if you had that on your system as well. So my, um, my system might look a little bit different from what a standard Victron GUI interface looks like. It's because I'm playing around with a modification to the Servo GX called GUI Mods, which gives you different information on the screen. So if you're interested in it, check it out. It's called GUI Mods. Um, it just looks a little bit different, gives you a bit more information on the screen. All right, so let's, first of all, let's bring up the menu. Sometimes there is a little bit of a delay. So menu. And then we're going to go to settings. And then we're going to scroll all the way down. And we first have to go to, oh, too far, re relay. So re we go to, this is the settings for the relay on your Servo GX. So there's two relays on, on a Servo GX. There's relay one, relay two. And you can see I already have it configured. So relay one is what you use for generator start stop. Relay two, you cannot configure the generator start stop on relay two. You have to use relay one. So you click on relay one and then you can choose generator start stop to as the function for that relay. And you can see I've already got it selected. You hit, and then once you have that selected, you can go back and then you can scroll up to the generator start stop settings menu. And then this here gives you basically the status of the generator, and but this is also where you configure it. So you can see that uh, my total runtime on my generator is only 18 hours. We have a new rig, so I haven't run it that much. Um, but I've had 18 hours since we got it end of last year. So let's keep scrolling down. So you first want to go to settings. And then you can go down to conditions. And this is where the fun stuff happens. So you have different settings that you can use. So you can tell this generator to start based on your battery state of charge, your battery current, your battery voltage, your, your AC load on the system, um, if the inverter getting too hot, um, any overload, if the inverter is being overloaded, and then also we'll talk here in a little bit about peri periodic running of the generator. So in my environment, it always seems to work best to set it up based off of the state of charge, not voltage, 
because when you put your load on the system your battery voltage will go down a bit so it's better to use a state of charge so you can see I have it enabled and then when you go into that setting you specify a, a setting a state of charge and so when their battery is depleted lower than that state of charge it will automatically fire up that generator and then you can also configure quiet hours because sometimes depending on campgrounds or harvest hosts you're at they might say hey you can run your generator but after 10 o'clock please don't run your generator and so what quiet hours is is it won't so like if if my battery gets below 15 percent and let's say my quiet hours is from like 10 p.m to 8 a.m and it's 11 o'clock at night and my battery just went below 15 percent it won't start that generator because we're in quiet hours however if you have this configured you your um your bat your the servo jacks will start your generator during quiet hours if it gets to a critical level defined in this here and then you can also define the settings of when uh the servo jacks will stop your generator so after your battery gets charged up enough you can have it turn off so I have my like quiet hours to only 40%. That way, if it does need to run during quiet hours, it will charge up just enough probably to get me through the rest of the night. And then during the day we can um, run it a lot longer. So, so that is this battery state of charge, um, gen start stop setting. So now let's go back and let's go talk about periodic testing. So with a generator, especially a gas generator and even diesel, you're going to want to periodically exercise that generator just to make sure it keeps on running um, and it's not going to have issues. Um, especially with a gas generator, um, which is where the carburetor is exposed to the atmosphere, that where the gasoline can get uh, or be evaporated. Uh, and then when that gasoline evaporates, it leaves a gummy residue which uh, gums up the carburetor and then it just doesn't work. So then you got to get it cleaned out and it can be an expensive fix. So with this Servo GX, you can configure a periodic run interval uh, for your generator. So you go into this menu and you click and you have to enable it. But then what you can do is you can specify the run interval. So how every how many days do you want a periodic run to happen and then you can also tell it when to skip it if the generator has already been running in that period of time and then also when to start it and then also how long to start it uh, for this exercise period this periodic run so this has been uh, very helpful to have because then you don't have to think about oh do I got when did I start my generator last month has it been has it been used is it running this is just worry free it's just going to work all right, so that's a little bit about the generator start-stop box that I have built. I've been testing it, and my customers that are using it love it. It's working great. Um, one customer, he says, it just fires right up. Whenever his battery gets depleted because his solar system, um, he doesn't have quite enough uh, battery bank yet or enough panel yet to sustain. So when he's running his air conditioner, the, it does deplete his batteries quite quickly. So he loves it that at least he doesn't have to think about starting up his generator when the battery gets depleted. So there might be a, so a couple questions that I've had about this generator start stop box is that what generators does it work with? So at the moment I've tested it with Onan gas and propane generators. Um, from what I've seen and I've, the research I've done, it should work with the Onan diesel generators as well because it uses the same three wire uh, setup as well. So basically it's using a negative signal to the generator for the generator to go to know to start or to stop. Um, as well I've, had, I've asked, does this work with 48 volt systems? So if you watch my last video, you'll see that I have a 48 volt rig and yes, this is getting 48 volts directly from my battery and it works with my generator start stop the reason being why it works with 48 volt systems is that 48 volts is just being used to power the relays 48 volts is not i repeat is not being sent to the generator a negative signal is being sent to the generator not a positive signal so this will work with 12 volt 24 volt or 48 volt systems as well and it comes pre-wired as I mentioned so inside the box there's seven wires they're pre-labeled already so all you have to do is get those wires and connect them to your system so I've tried to make it as easy and as simple as possible to use so if you have any questions after you buy one you get it from me reach out to me I am happy to help you get it working on your system 
So in short, this is the generator start stop box that I've been building, I've been testing it and I've been using it and it's been working really great. So if you're interested in getting your own, my contact details will be down below. Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.